A supermarket chain is being taken to court by the federal government because it asked a few of its employees to speak English. The federal government's Equal Opportunity, in, uh, Opportunity Commission, EEOC, is suing an Albertsons in San Diego, saying it created a hostile work environment by pressuring employees not to converse in Spanish. According to the EEOC, requiring English is a form of de facto discrimination based on national origin, an insane interpretation, but the EOC says it cannot be tolerated, and so it won't be. Ethan Behrman is a California radio host, and he joins us tonight. So, uh, Ethan, thanks for coming on. Um, obviously, thanks, the language that you speak is not the same as the country you are from. Plenty of American-born employees speak foreign languages. So it's not the same as discriminating on the basis of national origin. Why can't a business say, this is our building, and here are the standards of behavior that we expect our employees to meet. I thought that's kind of fundamental to employment, isn't it? Well, if you're interacting with a customer, you can require for the operation of the business to require English, for example. But in this case, these were people who were talking not with customers, but amongst themselves. So that seems really over the top. And yes, it becomes discriminatory because why else would a manager say you can't speak Spanish here? Why not say, hey, you can't speak any language other than English? But remember, English is not an official language of the United States, Tucker. We're, well, we're not I know, at that and that's, place that's where we say one of you our, can only speak English here. That's one of our core weaknesses, that it's not the official language. But again, doesn't an employer have a right to say you have to wear certain clothing, you have to dress and behave in a certain way? Language is not an inherent characteristic, and it's not a, so it's not a racial category. And so why should an employer have the right to ask that of its employees? Well, again, if I'm if I'm not interact, they do have that right. Again, if it affects directly how the business is able to operate. But if I'm stocking shelves, if you and I are back in the back room stocking shelves, and I want to start speaking Swedish with you or something, what does that have to do with how the business is functioning? Well, I don't or know. Operating? I mean, why should them, isn't that it, it doesn't? It, but isn't that a isn't that a well? I don't know. Maybe it is. I mean, that's a decision that should be up to the people who own and run the business, not some moron bureaucrat back in Washington, right? No, I actually totally disagree with you on this one, Tucker. And here's why. It was the Soviets that had to russify the countries that they dominated. It's the Chinese that say all of you outer region have to speak Mandarin. You can't speak your native languages anymore. We don't want to be like the Chinese or the Soviets and start San forcing Diego, people to start uh, speaking San Diego, which I'm from, is not an outer region. It's part of the continental United States. We didn't conquer it. It's a state. It's not a province or a territory or an occupied nation seeking freedom. It's part of the United States. And by the way, let me look, you know what this really is, which is the left seeks to divide the country along racial and ethnic and cultural lines. It's their full time job. Let me ask you a simple question. Is there a single country in the world you know of that's bilingual or multilingual that's not at war with itself? Well, I, I don't believe Brazil is at war with itself other than their presidents continue to commit crimes and get arrested there. But Brazil doesn't uh, commit war with itself. And there are many languages spoken there. We have a lot of examples around the world that are Brazil is a deeply and divided it. country. Look, it, there's no country that I'm aware of on Earth where you don't have an overwhelming majority of people united in a language, except those countries like Belgium, like Canada, that are riven by these cultural and linguistic differences. Like language is culture. Why wouldn't you want your whole country to speak one language? Why is that bad? Isn't well, that the goal? Well, I, of course, and, and ultimately, you know, in government interactions, in our international business transactions, and again, back to the EEOC in this story, a, government, a business, when it is relevant to the function of the business and required for them to operate, they can require somebody to speak English. But this is who? intruding Wait, so on let, two let individual you employees obvious... communicating amongst themselves. <laughs> All right, okay, yeah. but says who? I mean, do you really think that the EC, EOC, and I'm sad to say it's a Trump administration office, but the EEOC back in Washington knows more about how to run a supermarket than the guys who run Albertsons in San Diego? Well, I would suggest that we have one manager in particular that is being singled out by the EEOC for doing these actions and pointing it out. 
Yeah, I think that there are times that we have to call out people for doing things that we know are overtly wrong and targeting very specific minority groups. That is our responsibility. But, but first of all, okay, I would say Spanish speakers are hardly a minority in California. That's just not true. I mean, if they are, it's only by a little bit. It's like half the state practically speaks, literally, I think it's 45% speaks Spanish at home. So it's not a minority, really. But I just got to ask you, why wouldn't liberals who believe or say they do in bringing people together encourage every American to speak English everywhere? Language brings us together. Isn't that obvious? Because, but, but, but our language is more than just where we live right now. It is our heritage as well. You know, if I go to the synagogue, we speak Hebrew there. Should I be stopped from that because I need to speak English everywhere? Um, can, can my friends who come over from Germany, you know, can they speak German as well? I mean, so people I, don't, I don't agree with that. I think that there are times and places Hebrew for speaking synag- English. Okay. Okay, but look, th- that is a ludicrous example. I don't think in the congregation, in most synagogues, people are speaking Hebrew, and if there are more power to them, but that is a tiny slice of our public life. I just mean day to day in the functions of government. Why wouldn't you want as many people as possible to be speaking the same language? You're dividing them if you're not encouraging them well, to do I, that, I th- aren't you? I think we do want people to speak uh, as much the same language, but again, in this case, we had individual employees when they weren't interacting with customers speaking a language amongst themselves that they were comfortable with. I, I worked at McDonald's as a teenager and spoke another language to a co-worker of mine because it was fun to do that so people couldn't eavesdrop even though we were taking care of the customers in English. They, you know, Intruding on that aspect of individual personal lives and interactions I think would be government yeah. overreach and in this case though we have a manager trying to intrude on somebody's ability to yeah, speak but a language look, it's with a, one another. It's, it's a private, it's a private business and working for one means giving up you know some of your freedom of expression but Ethan thank you great to see you thanks Tucker